tell you what I'm going to do this morning. I want you to take your Bible, turn to Ephesians 5, if you would. Ephesians 5. Um, without, without getting into too many details. Um, it has been brought to my attention that we have had some people on the outside with serious criticisms against me and our church. And I come to find out that at least one on the inside that has fallen in with that and been a part of it for quite a while. And um, some of you may know what it's about, some of you may not. I'm not here to try to, you know, spread gossip or whatever. Um... But that has, the devil has reached in because of that into a particular family and absolutely just destroyed that whole family. And I mean destroyed it. And um, it troubles me for that to happen. But then also because of relationships with that family, you may have people choosing sides. Okay? Now, the first thing I'm going I'm to tell you is how I deal with sin in this church, okay? If I hear about it, I go to that person like you're supposed to. First of all, everybody in this room is guilty. Everybody. Okay? So... On occasion, when an issue has come up with one person or another, I sit them down and I talk to them with the idea of restoration. If you don't have that in mind, you're not doing right. Okay? You're to, you know, part of what I was going to preach was love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. If you would want to be restored after you've done something wrong, then you, ought, you owe somebody else the same idea. You owe it to them. Because you would want it done to you. I've had it done to me. I've had people sit down with me and say, Mike, let me talk to you about something. Boom. Okay? And it's always best just get it out in the open and let God have it. Repented. It's over with. You move on. But then somebody else then knows about that and then they use that. They hold that like a, you know, like somebody in, working in the government is holding information on you. They know things about you. Well, they hold on to that and they use that. So then they start spreading rumors. So-and-so did this and so-and-so did that and Brother Mike didn't do anything about it so he's just letting it go on, which is not true. I know what sin can do to a person, I know what sin can do to a family, and I know what sin can do to this church. And I'm telling you, there is nothing more important to me than honoring God in everything that we do. And I mean everything that we do. Even if it's people in my own family, they will tell you, I've had to sit down and say, this is what I know, and let's get this under the blood. Okay? That's how I deal with it. Then if, then if nothing works, then you take it up a notch. You bring somebody else in on it. And then, regretfully, you would have to bring it before the church. Which, I'll be honest with you, I've never done. Because in the case of, you know, some people, once you get it to the point where they're not going to repent, and you have to possibly bring it before the church, they leave anyway, and then there's no, there's no use in it, they're gone. And so that's how, I deal, that's how I deal with it, and that's how it should be dealt. There are things that you do that I never find out about it, don't want to know. You're supposed to keep it between you and God, amen? That's where I, that's where I want everybody's sins kept, between you and and God because God has the ability to deal with people and God has the ability to deal with things that you and I just don't have 
when we try to take matters in our own hands, that's when problems arise. I've found that out. Okay? So, yeah, people in this church have done things wrong. Okay? And you're going to, if I didn't, if I wasn't, if I wasn't okay with that, I would leave. If I thought that I had a perfect church and that I would never have a problem out of anybody, oh, that'd be great. But I know you're sinners. But I also know that most of you people have a good heart and you're going to take care of it between you and God. And that's where it ought to stay. Amen? But a false accusation was laid against somebody in this church. And uh, I know it's false. And that's the side that I'm taking is the person who was accused and I know they didn't do it and uh, so anyway it may have had it may have effect on some other families here they may be picking sides I don't know I, it's I've had this happen before and you just kind of wait and see who you have left and then you pick up and then you move on but it's 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 bothersome okay so let me, let me deal with some things out of Ephesians 5. Look at verse 1. This is to this church, and you folks online, we consider you as much a part as anybody here. And I'm just going to be honest. The things that we have done in Kenya would not be possible with just this church. Would not even be close. So the folks that are online... I mean, you guys, God has laid it on your heart. You've sent the money in. We've tried to do right by that, by doing what you asked to be done with it. And that's what we've done. But um, let, me, let me just say this, and I'm going to get it out of the way. Okay? This is who we are as a church, and this is what we do. If you don't want that, you don't like that, I mean, you could have come told me, you could have come told somebody on the board, We'd have talked about it, prayed about it, see what God wanted us to do. But this is what we're doing, and if you're not comfortable with that, don't like that, there are other churches for you to go to, but this is who we are. And I don't feel like changing or quitting just because somebody hasn't liked it all this time. Is that okay if I speak my mind every now and then? Okay, now, the Bible. Ephesians 5, verse 1, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Who are we following? God, who are we? Children, dear children. Okay, that means when God sees something he don't like in you, God will whoop the fire out of you. And if you won't let him, guess who you are? Okay, so I mean I know not everybody in here does right. I don't do right all the time. My wife don't do right all the time. My kids don't do right all the time. And you guys don't do right all the time. But we have a father who loves us, who takes care of business with us. Amen? Walk in love, there it is, walk in love, as Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. So what he's telling everybody in this church, that your life is going to be a sacrifice to somebody else. It's not that everybody's got to cater to you and bow to you, you cater to them, you bow to them, you be a sacrifice for them, Christ died for you, you do something for somebody else. Amen? That's how it's supposed to be. Now, the serious part. Fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints. And I want to hear God's people say amen. This world is full of it. Full of filth and fornication on the internet, on your television sets, at the movies. It is everywhere. Get away from that stuff. It'll kill you. It'll kill your faith, it'll kill your family, it'll destroy this church. Get away from it. Look at verse 5. For this you know that no whoremonger, how many of them? None of them, or unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Get it under the blood, let God deal with you, let God chastise it out of you, or else. Amen? Verse 6. Let the man deceive you with vain words. Listen to me, Bethel Church. 
there's always going to be somebody disgruntled that's come out of this church. They have a bitter spirit, and a bitter spirit tends to be infecting others. Okay? So don't listen to somebody who's come out of here with a bitter spirit. Don't follow. Don't be deceived with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. For you were sometimes darkness, darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all, godly, is all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. That's your responsibility. You say you're a Christian. You say you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't be a follower of me. Be a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you say that, then there should be proof in your life that that's who you are. And if there is no proof in your life, then you're lying to God and you're lying to everybody else and you're lying to yourself and you're lying to your church. What good does that do? Okay? I, I mean, I'm telling you, I've had somebody in this church for years who was nothing but critical against everything that we did. And rumor spreaders. Okay? And I've, I'm done with that. I've had it. It's, it'll tear, it's tearing this church up. It'll tear the whole thing down if we let it. And I, there's nothing worse in the world than to see everything that you work for, everything that you built, tore right out from underneath you. I'm telling you, there's nothing in the world worse than that. It's like having your home burned down or your home taken away in a tornado. Now, let me get down to... Um, Oh, let's see here. Verse 18, be not drunk with wine. Somebody say amen. Get, get away from the bottle. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, that means quit with, listening to Willie Nelson. Quit listening to rap music, hip-hop music, rock music. Quit listening to that stuff. Sing gospel songs in your car. Okay? Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21. Everybody look at your Bible. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Brotherhood, sisterhood. This is why when we sing, when we come here on Sunday morning, we go to one another. Go to somebody you don't normally go to. Learn their names. Get to know them. Get to love them. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're here for them. Tell them you pray for them. Okay? This is what we're here for. If we don't have a church that does that, we, then we don't have a church. Now listen here. This has to be preached. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. I didn't say that. God said it. This is what God said to do. Okay? And if ladies... If you want God to bless you, you want God to bless your family, you want God to bless your church, then submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. This Bible is right. This stuff doesn't get preached anywhere else, but just a few churches here and there. And even in some cases, that teaching is abused. Because I'm going to turn on the men in just a little bit. I, the reason why I'd had this in my mind this morning while I was praying was to deal with the men. Now, husbands, verse 25. You have the greater responsibility and the more difficult responsibility. Love your wives. Believe it or not, it's harder to love your wife for a man than it is for a wife to submit to the husband. In another place, Paul says, Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Because, guys, let's be honest. Bitterness against our wives turns into lust for another one. Because you start thinking that somebody else will treat you better or be better to you than your own wife. You say, well, you don't know my wife. 
Let me tell you about a man by the name of Hosea who loved his wife and she was a harlot. And his unconditional love for her, even when she ran out on him, brought her back and God saved that family. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't you ever put your hand on your wife. Don't you ever do that. I've, I've had it to hear with that one. You put, let me tell you how they used to do it back in the old days. I wish we could go back to that. In a community, if they, the men in that community found out you touched your wife, they would come to your house, pull you out of your house, get you down on the ground, and say, the next time you hit your wife, we're coming for you. Okay? Because that's one of the things that's happened in this church. And it should never happen. Ever. Don't you put your hand on your wife. You're supposed to love her. You're supposed to not be bitter against her. And when she ain't acting right, and they don't always act right, tell God. Let God deal with her. Hey, God's better at it than you are anyway. And when she won't listen to you, you go tell God. I guarantee you God will make her listen to her or he'll put her out. I'm telling you guys, I used to preach this pretty hard. And I, I don't know, for some reason I let up, I don't know. But I'm going to go back to it. You want the problems to end in your marriage? Then husbands need to start getting right with God. They need to start getting on their knees and praying about situations and issues that are going on in their family. Instead of acting stupid about it. Mm-hmm. Husbands, Christ never beat us, did he? Christ has never hurt you. His love for us here has been so unconditional. He's let you do some of the stupid stuff you've done, and you got away with it. He let you, Jesus let you chew him out and complain to him. Remember how Israel complained all the time in the Old Testament? They were complaining to God when God opened up the Red Sea. You go read it. That was God's unconditional love for the woman that he called his wife. And he said, I espoused you. I'm just telling you guys that there isn't nothing, nothing that cannot be handled through prayer. Nothing. So let's stop the divorces in our church. Because they've eaten us up. Let's stop the divorces. Let's stop the, the families fighting each other all the time. And get back to loving each other like we're supposed to. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands, it's your responsibility, not the wife, to give. It's your responsibility to take care of the family. You're the one responsible. It's all on you, but God gave you big enough shoulders to carry it. God did not, God did not give your wife the, the means and the ability to support the problems of the family. That's why she talks the way she does. God blessed her by giving her the ability to handle a lot of pain but very little pressure. God gave us the ability to handle the pressure. We're supposed to be the strong ones. And you're not strong by showing your, your wife how hard you can hit her. You big sissy. I listen, I'm sick of that. I am sick of it. Makes me mad. Guys hit their wife. Get it under the blood. You got a temper problem? Go tell God about it. So have God... Have God chasing it out of you. Next time you get mad, say, God, get madder at me than I'm madder at everybody else. Hit me harder than I hit somebody else. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle 
or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. We need some holy families in our church. Holy families. Unblemished families. Again, God's not going to send me perfect people here. I, I get that. But then get your sins under the blood. Confess them. Let godly sorrow work repentance unto salvation for you and your family. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. And guys, it doesn't start with you loving yourself. It starts with you loving your wife first, then yourself. The husbands are to be the ones who do without first, so that the family does not do without. Our forefathers, during the Depression, when we had real men who went out and made sure that their wife and their kids were fed, even if they weren't, that's the kind of men we need to get back to being. And by the way, men, that goes both spiritually and physically. You men are to labor in the word and be men of the word and be men of your word. You swore an oath before God and a company of people to be faithful to your wife. Be a man of promise. Be a man of your word. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones for this cause. I mean, here, look, here it is right here. I'm going to celebrate 32 years with my wife this year. We're talking about going somewhere. I don't know if we're going to get to or not, but we're talking about it. I promise you, Had God not allowed that to happen, it would have never happened. I promise you. So I don't take near the credit for my marriage as I give the credit to the Lord for helping her and helping me. So what I'm telling you is, if God can do it in us, I promise promise you he can do it in anybody now I've said this before and I'm going to say it again if you've been divorced remarried okay let's stop let's stop the divorces let's get our marriages and our families right before God because it dawned on me Years ago, God dealt with me that there was something that was more important than my needs or my desires or my wants. And what it was, was marriage because of what it represents. When Christ appears in the air, He's not just calling random people up. He's calling his bride to step forth. Okay? That was established long before there was ever a church. And long before there was ever even a city. God established marriage above everything. So... God worked in my mind and in my heart and said, Mike, you ought to uphold marriage above yourself, above anything else. Do it for Christ's sake and his church's sake. That'll help you. That'll help you get your mind and your heart right. Okay? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now I'm going to say this. 
The strength of a church will be twofold. It'll be upon the men. It'll be upon the men to shoulder the burdens, the responsibilities, the cares, the worries of the church. It'll be upon the men. God gave us the heart and the shoulders to bear it. It was men who put the boards of this church together, not women. The women hung the stuff on the walls, but it was the men who built the walls. Likewise, also, it is the men of this church that will make sure this church is steered in the right direction, making the right decisions, doing what we believe God has told us to do. Can I count on my men because I cannot do it alone? It is upon us men as it was the men who built the building of the church, it is also upon the men to build the congregation of the church. Am I right? So, in times past, the devil has chewed out people out of this church. What have you done to fill in the pews of whom the devil took out? What have you done? See my point? It's your church. If you want people here, they're not just going to show up. That you're going to bring them. That falls on all of us. Amen? Now, I'm not asking for a mega church. I'm not asking for a big church. And I'm not asking for every pew to be filled. I think it would get hot in the building. What I'm asking for is for some godly men that will undertake the responsibility of the church that you're attending. You want to be a member? Let's join. Okay? You want to serve? Come ask me what you can do. I'll give you a job. But nobody asks. Nobody asks. Maybe one or two. Okay? Other than that, nobody ever asks what they can do around here. Nobody ever asks, how can we help? Nobody ever asks, how can we get people in? And I can't do it by myself. Ladies, it falls on you then to be the spirit of grace in this church. That means that you deny yourself of all that stuff that goes on inside your head. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Or do I have to spell it out? Do women ever get jealous? And I'm not talking about just your husband. Do women ever get mean-spirited? Do women ever gossip? Do women ever go at each other's throats from time to time? P cut it out. Put that away. Okay? Because it'll... It has destroyed this place before. And it'll happen. I've been here a long time. And I've seen Jezebel women and men do nothing but destroy everything here. And what does it accomplish? Does nothing but split up some good people. And I hate to see that again. Okay? So, let's, I don't know, start all over again. Now, I'm praying about something. I want you to help me pray about it, and I want your opinion on it. Okay? I've talked to Brother Reg Kelly about the possibility of coming here and preaching some services for us. Reg is my pastor. He and I don't agree on everything, but he's my pastor. Okay? That man can say anything to me, and I'd listen to him, and he knows it. So I trust him. Because I know he loves this church. I know he loves me. So he's asked me to pray about it. And he said he would come if we were sure that this is what the Lord wanted. But I would have a set of meetings just for this church. Yeah, I'd stream them. But it would be for us. Because I think we need it. 
okay? But I got to know you'll show up. I got to know you'll show up. Because there's nothing worse than when we have meetings here and nobody shows up. Because I know of a thousand people on the other side of that camera that would gladly come and sit in your pew. And I don't want that. You guys are my church. My first love. And I want to keep it that way. Now, as far as I know, I said everything in love. Because I love this church. And I want to keep going. But guys, let's get our heart right. Ladies, likewise. Can we do it? Are you up for it? Okay. I want us to bow our heads. Father, I don't know everything that's going on. I know the devil pretty well. I know what he's capable of doing. I know what he has done. And I am not happy about it. And I just knew that when Michael left and got on that plane, I just had a feeling something was going to happen. And I prayed, dear God, that for the sake of those starving families, that you would keep us doing what you've let us do. Father, I believe you, you love the people of Kenya, and I believe, Father, that you're going to do for them and continue to work there, whether we're part of it or not. But, Father, I'd rather it be us that you did it through because I know the blessing and the satisfaction that comes with knowing that God used the worst sinners he could find to do his great work. And Father, I don't, I don't ever resent the fact That you sent sinners to this church is who we're supposed to be. But Father, I pray, dear God, that you would stop what Satan is trying to do. Father, that you would restore the damage that's been done to families. God, that you would restore the damage that a bitter tongue has caused. That you would restore, Father, the rumors, the gossip. That you'd make it not as good as it was, but better than what it was. Because that's what you do. Father, there isn't anybody sitting in this room, God, that I've got anything against. Nothing. And Father, I pray that if anybody has aught against me, God, you would get involved, that you'd change me, make me better, Father, that you'd do away with it. 
this is your church, and these are your people. And I pray, dear God, that you would always bless us together. And Father, I just, I've never felt a spirit like I had this morning. And I pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit would rule and reign in our hearts and in our minds. I pray, dear God, for every man here, God, that they would purpose in their heart to be God's men. God's men. Every lady in this church, they would purpose in their heart to be women of grace, women of a meek and a quiet spirit. That, Father, through that, you would do astounding things. The men are the builders, but, Father, these women, they're the birthers. And it's through their grace and, Father, through their work, your work in their life, that souls would be saved anyway. So, Father, bless our marriages. Let there be not any more divorce in our church. And God, that you would work through husbands. You would work through wives. You give them the grace that they need, Father, to have a family of God and a marriage that looks like the marriage of Christ and His church. And Father, I thank You for these people, Lord, and their prayer. And Father, I serve at their will and on their behalf. And I just pray, Heavenly Father God, that You would just restore the Spirit that once was here. And get us back in the business of serving you and doing it right. Father, bless your word. Bless this church. We need your help today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.